Thompson Data, yet Billy Real Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction Data Warehousing Series. And our topic for today is about the function and tools of uh, Data Warehouse. Next to it, we have the terminologies. And the last topic we have right now is the delivery process. Now let's proceed. So we have here five functions of data warehouse tools and utilities. The first one, we have data extraction. Second, we have data cleaning. Third, we have data transformation. Fourth, we have data loading. And five, refreshing. Now, as you notice in our previous uh, discussion, there's a what you call ETL, okay, that connects uh, the sources to the data warehouse. And that ETL is also included in the function because E stands for extraction, T for transformation, and L for loading. So that is what you call the ETL. But right now, it is not only the ETL that the data warehouse have its function. We have data cleaning and refreshing. Let's continue. Now let's define the data extraction. Okay, this involves gathering data from multiple heterogeneous sources. So from the data sources in any type of the data, they're going to gather all of it. They're going to take it. And that's what you call the data extraction. The second one is the data cleaning. It involves in finding and correcting the errors in data. As the database uh, is concerned, you know, if, we, if we're going to input data on the database, we're going to make that it is considered to be uh, correct because it will go under its normal forms. For example, if it is a name, then we need to put it a name. And the name must be subdivided into uh, last name, first name, middle name. So next is the data transformation. So this involves converting the data from legacy format to a warehouse format. So when we said legacy, the origin of the data so we have plenty of uh, origin of data or the legacy itself. For example, it came from a normal text that is one of the legacy. It came from Microsoft Excel. It came from Microsoft Word or Word. Okay. It came from PowerPoint. It came from uh, a database, DBA, DBF. Uh, there are plenty of format we have in terms of data. Now, this format we identified as the original format is called the legacy format. And that legacy format goes to the warehouse format, which is only one format. That's why we have a what you saw called conversion of those legacy format into a warehouse format and that is what you call the data transformation okay next we have data loading data loading involves sorting summarizing consolidating checking integrity and building indices and partitions so when when the loading is concerned it is something like uh, they're going to pop up on the screen now if you are going to have a load on of the data make it sure that is considered to be sorted because you can you can uh, encounter some difficulties for example if the data is not sorted it is not arranged it is not summarized it is not integrated so it is not indexed already okay so there is no part of it for example uh, name name 
we are going to type Sundata yet Villarreal Jr. on the text box. And we have also a name like last name, so Villarreal, first name, Sundata, middle name, yet. And that is what we call partitions. We are doing this so that uh, the data, once uh, we load, is considered to be exact. And we are not uh, compromised with the data we look at at the output screen, even on the printed output. Okay, number five, refreshing. Okay, refreshing involves updating from data sources to warehouse. And uh, updating is not part of a data warehouse. It is part of the operational database. Because we cannot uh, do the analysis without the updates. So that is refreshing. Now, we have here below, which is a note, that the data cleaning and data transformation are important steps in improving the quality of data and the data mining result. That is true because um, how can you integrate data that are not being transformed into a one format? That's very difficult. So let's continue. Now, right now, we are finished with the function of data warehouse tools and utilities, and we have five, okay? Uh, that is the ETL, and cleaning, and uh, refreshing. Now, let's go now to the second topic we have, data warehousing terminology. Okay, in this part, we will discuss some of the most commonly used terms in data warehousing. The first one we have is the metadata as you seen on the figure itself. So metadata is simply defined as data about data. Now, the data that are used to represent other data is known as metadata. For example, the index of a book serves as a metadata for the contents in the book. In other words, we can say that a metadata is the summarized data that leads us to the detailed data okay so metadata is the summarized data but uh, to make it sure that a metadata you clearly understand is that it is a subdata again a data with a subdata and this subdata has its sub subdata so let's continue in terms of data warehouse, we can define metadata as the following. Number one, metadata is a roadmap to data warehouse. Number two, metadata is a data warehouse defined the warehouse objects. Number three, metadata acts as a directory. The directory helps the decision support system to locate the contents of the data warehouse. Now, if you're going to analyze the three bullets we have, so it is a roadmap, it is an object, and it is a directory. And it is always clear that it talks about only one purpose. So, if you're going to combine all of this, so metadata is simply as the summary. Now, now metadata repository is an integral part of a data warehouse system. It contains the following metadata. Number one, business metadata. Business metadata, it contains the data ownership information, business definition, and changing policy. So, we talk here about data ownership. So if there is a data ownership, so it is required in terms of education that you are going to mention the owner, which you gather the data. So for example, you search in the internet. So all of the, the, the links, the author of the book uh, or ebook that you gathered should be mentioned. Okay? And sometimes in education, we email the owner of 
personality such as information, definition, and the policies. So that is uh, what we do in PUP. Next, we have operational metadata. It includes concurrency of data and data line age. Concurrency um, is uh, different from currency. Okay? Currency of data refers to the data being active, archived, or purged. Line age of data means history of data, migrated and transformation applied on it. So when we said currency data is a very simple it is a raw data so operational metadata identifies raw data and line age identify the history of data so we have two in terms of operational metadata now data for mapping from operational environment to data warehouse metadata includes source databases and their contents data extraction, data partition, cleaning, transformation, rules, data refresh, and purging rules. Uh, if you notice, uh, all of the tools or function of the data warehouse are included. Even the metadata because they put here purging. Okay? It has been added. And it is mentioned here that the map or the mapping from operational environment of data warehouse as much as possible we have already five in the tools we have uh, five topic of uh, operational there's what they are called purging rules okay so you are going to identify the sources of the data it is also included here okay in a mapping right now we have already six okay so we have the ETL uh, the partition, the refresh, and the purging. Now, the algorithm for summarization includes dimension algorithm, data on granularity, aggregation, summarizing, etc. Now, algorithm is very difficult just in case you're going to put it into a data warehouse. That's why it identifies right here that the algorithm has its dimension. So if we're going to dig in on that word, it means to say that there is a limitation on the part of algorithm because of its dimension. Next, we have data cube. So a data cube helps us represent data in multiple dimensions. It is defined by dimensions and facts. The dimensions are entities with respect to which an enterprise preserves the records. Illustration of data cube. Suppose a company wants to keep track of sales records with the help of sales data warehouse with respect to time, item, branch, and location. Now these dimensions allow to keep track of monthly sale and at which branch the items were sold. There is a table associated with each dimension. This table is known as dimension table. For example, item. Dimension table may have attributes such as item name, item type, item brand. So dimension, uh, they point out here that it is the dimension itself okay so in uh, in a different format which in programming uh, we call this as the algorithm uh, the prefixes and the suffixes so because you use item just in the data warehouse at is which they identified it as a dimension to us it is the algorithm of suffix and prefix because the item is the prefix with underscore on it then there is a what they call the name of the field so it is clear for us what we are talking about here so the item underscore name is a what you call a variable name and in a database it is called a field name 
now since it identifies the item so we have the prefixes of the item okay to make it a one complete variable or field so that we can input all names on that part that is considered to be item only not the for example the on the employee that's the idea of uh, the dimension or the date of cube right here but to us is it is the algorithm of a variable the prefix and the suffixes the following table represents the 2d view of sales data for a company with respect to time item and location dimension but here in this 2d table we have record with respect to time and and item only so here is the example in figure 10 shows the 2d data cube which was been mentioned on the last slide we had so we have here this is part one two three four five there is a name okay right here allison richard Bob, the fans and there is what they call the location vancouver calgary toronto montreal store location customer part we can do this if we are we are in online connection okay because of the location it's too far this is what you call the da 2d data cube actually if we're going to clearly analyze the reality about this um, everything that has uh, two sides is considered to be 2d 